Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I Welcome, friends, to worship and the praise of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us know that the peace of God is with us, that Christ is with us, and the power of his peace is in us. Let us share that with one another. Peace be with you.
River to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, sisters, let's go down. I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way. And who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down. Come on down, come on, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down. Come on down, come on, fathers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. Welcome to you all. I believe that there is a nursery, if anyone would like to use it, the nursery attendant out that door, off that way. We come this morning and hear another story of the risen Jesus as he appears to the disciples who are shocked and confused. Jesus allays their fears and then after explaining why he is risen, he charges them and us with carrying the message of Easter to the world. As you listen this morning, please try to imagine yourself among the disciples as they were encountered by Jesus. Good morning. All that are able would please rise for the reading of the gospel. This is the reading of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, <clears throat> verses 36 through 48. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me 
and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Well, in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their eye, minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to our Savior, Jesus Christ. were you able to imagine yourself and the story? Did you experience the shock and the confusion of the disciples? How about the joy and wonder that they felt? Some of us are more able to connect with the story in that way than others, which is why Jesus has told the disciples that they and we should be faithful witnesses to the resurrection for those who did not actually see and touch him. Today we can accept the resurrection of Jesus as a matter of doctrine because we're told about it from people who ha we have deemed reliable witnesses. But we can also have moments quite similar to theirs, moments we might call aha moments when the light goes on in our heads, when we perceive God's amazing love for us in times of grief and hardship. It happens because the Holy Spirit had come to us to bring Jesus into our experience 2,000 years on, all across the globe. This is important because when we simply accept something with our heads, we are not invested in it. We're not willing to live with its truth, to make sacrifices for it. But when we have a profound experience, yes, we will risk our lives and make sacrifices for it. When we've had that profound experience in our lives of the light, 
we know the truth of it. The events of these divine encounters become the mooring stones, the anchors, as we are pushed back and forth in the winds and waves of life, the war and migration, hunger, fear, struggles to survive, loneliness, grief, losses. So what is your mooring stone? What is your anchor in troubled water? What is the foundation of your life as the world rushes around you with fierce forces? You know, we often try to hold on to things that keep slipping out of our grasp. Money, status, rights, stuff, even culture can be ripped away from us. But when we're grounded in the love of Jesus a love we have personally experienced and the work of the Holy Spirit can move through us so that we more than survive, that we become truly alive. When we're grounded in the love of Jesus, we have personally experienced that Holy Spirit works in us so that we thrive and grow even in the challenges of life. John Wesley was about to give up his life. He'd had a long one, and he is reported to have said, the best of all is that God is with us. He was not guessing or speculating. He was speaking the assurance of someone who had experienced in this life the presence of God in the good and in the bad times. How else could he have continued for those many years celebrating and praising God's faithfulness in love in the face of so much hostility? Those who have this experience hold fast to the praise of God who they know is always present with them. If you have ever been at risk, vulnerable, afraid, and turned to Jesus, you have probably felt a presence of some sort that gave you hope and even joy. If you come to a point in your life where the old ways of coping with difficulties have failed you, and you step forth to trust Jesus, you found his outstretched arms to hold you. If you've wondered what the point of your life is and you have despaired and yet carried on, the arms of Jesus have been felt beneath, beneath you. And if you have stopped believing in any God but come into a dark and shadowed place in your life, you can have that aha moment when you are encountered by Jesus who does not even demand you name him or admit that you are being loved by God, though he beckons you into relationship with him. It's what we Methodists call prevenient grace. The grace that comes before we even acknowledge that God is working for us. Of course, we have neuroscience to explain how this happens, but only God is the explanation of why. The divine love reveals itself to us when we are most in need. You see, just as Jesus reached out in love to the thief who was crucified with him, so does he reach out to all people in their hours of need. The truth is, Christ reaches out to us all in every hour. We are never cut off, but always beckon to open our hearts to receive that divine love. Once we are conscious of this, once we are conscious of being encountered by God, we naturally rise up in joy and thankful wonder. When we worship, this joy and wonder rises up again within us. Our awareness of God grows as we worship. 
Have you noticed that those who worship with passionate joy, even in the face of hardship, seem to have a deep inner peace and calm in their face as they face challenges? How they're able to face the world, the heads, heads held high, calm hearts as they face challenges. How they're able to face the world. Have you felt that within yourself? Because if you do, you will joyfully raise, praise God throughout your life. Your praises will grow more and more every day. You see, the path is from fear and confusion into joy and wonder. It's a pathway of Christian experience. But this is just the beginning. Jesus said repentance and forgiveness is to be proclaimed in the name of Jesus Christ to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. This is our mission. Remember, repentance is simply changing one's mind. You open up to the aha moments of God's presence in our lives. To embrace them. To reach out in thankfulness and joy. <clears throat> to accept the abundant love that Jesus offers us and allow the Spirit to dwell in us and transform us. This transformation begins by washing away all the barriers that we have within us that keep us from experiencing the love of God. Our guilt, our shame, our inadequacy, our fear, our self-hatred and doubt, all the ways we use to defend ourselves while hurting others and keeping God at bay. Forgiveness cuts through it all and leaves us with a new freedom a new sense of power to live fully and completely, to be loved and to love. Proclaiming this, yes, with words, but most importantly, by allowing the love of God to work through us to reach other persons is our divine calling. When we allow ourselves to receive divine love and allow it to flow freely within us, then joy praise, passionate zeal, and that same love just splashes out of us into others. We learn the value of the contributions that different folks make. We experience God through their eyes and their lives. We give thanks that they, like us, know Jesus but that, there, that our differences are blessings that give more glory to God. Today, as we celebrate the coming together of two Methodist communities with different backgrounds and experiences, we're deeply blessed by God with the opportunity to discover new and richer ways to receive and share God's love with each other and many more. So I invite you right now to find someone you do not know very well and perhaps shake hands if you're comfortable saying to them, the Christ in me rejoices in the Christ in you. The Christ in me rejoices in the Christ in you. You can stand up and greet people the Christ in me rejoices in the Christ in you. The Christ in me rejoices in the Christ in you. And after worship, and after worship, I want to, I'm inviting you to speak with someone that you do not know well.
Exchange some contact information. That one thing you get Methodists talking and you can't stop them. <laughs> Friends, as we, after our worship here in the sanctuary, we go forth for refreshments. I'm really inviting you to get some contact information from somebody you don't know. And I suggest you call them this week. You have a conversation. Maybe you even meet for coffee. You pray for each other. Let's do that today and build that relationship. We'll then be, you see, enacting, embodying the call of Christ to proclaim the love of God with our whole person. The joy of this will infect us with the urge to do it again and again and again. Jesus was raised for the dead not so we could sit around and be dead, but so we could be alive with the Holy Spirit, so we could be alive with the knowledge of Jesus, so that we could experience God in this life and in the next life. Jesus came to life again for us so that we could share with all who face death and hardship and struggle that there is life, there is joy, there is hope, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We are called to live it. And last time I checked, there were seven days in the week. So aside from the hour on Sunday, there are plenty more hours in the week to share the love of Jesus. And if we live in that love and share that love truly, 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 the kingdom of God shall have come near. Amen.
was asked to give a short message about the importance of generosity and giving from my personal perspective. Brooke Sherman gave an excellent talk on generosity last Sunday, so I will not address that topic. As to giving from my perspective, it really goes back to when I was a child. My parents were committed to their religion and the Methodist Church, and three important things, the main important thing, they expected of us eight kids to attend church, get an education, and have respect for each other and ourselves. I sang in the choir, taught Sunday school, and led the youth group all before I was 18. When it was time to leave home, I was really terrified, but remembered what I had learned in church and carried it with me. There are two Bible verses that has helped me on my long journey. They are Psalms, there is chapter 32, eighth verse. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. In Proverbs, the third chapter, five and the fifth and sixth verse, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and then lead not unto thine understanding in all ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I am a firm believer that where you are is where God intended you to be. Little did I expect that God wanted me in Germany or Okinawa. Although I didn't know why I was there, I believe that each step of the journey prepared me for the next one. With Herbert in the military, we made many changes, and my faith guided me through each one. The hardest one was taking three children by ship to Germany. I had no idea what to expect. As the ship left port, I waved goodbye to my mother, my aunt, and uncle. I realized it was too late to turn back, so again, I placed my trust in the Lord to carry me through. Imagine a young lady from a small town in West Virginia who had never been on an airplane embarking on the journey of six days on a ship, three small children, and not knowing what to expect. But again, the Lord was there for me. They assigned us seat at a table, which was to be where we would eat every day. The young man who was the waiter was very pleasant and began to ask questions about where I was from. And when I told him I was from Grafton, West Virginia, he had a big smile on his face because he was from Fairmont, West Virginia. 21 miles from my home and went to school with people from my hometown. It was a blessing because I did not feel alone on that journey. I lost my place. Um, and our giving, no, that's not where I want to go. <laughs> giving is what keeps the church alive. When we mention giving, we think of money but there are more ways to give than money. You can give of your time and your talent, as well as what you can give financially. Herbert and I both have been very active in this church, giving of our time and what talent we possess, as well as financially. Our giving is important to us. Herbert and I give to support the church, but the real reason for us is to give thanks for the many blessings we have received and continue to receive. So give if you can and what you can, and God will return those givings back into blessings.
a quiet crowd. Oh Lord, we give you thanks and praise even for this cold morning that we have a place to get up in, that we have a roof and food, we have relative safety. We give you thanks most importantly that you love us, that you fill us, that you come to us wherever we are in our hardest places. Lord, though we lift up those who are experiencing challenges of any kind, from hard warfare and disease, loneliness and grief, insecurities, concerns about work and family, those with mental health and physical health problems. We trust, O oh Lord, that you are always at work in the world. And we thank you and we call upon you to reach out and to touch directly with your hands and through the hands of those who love you. Guide us to be more and more your children and your hands and voice in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. So many ways that we run off and get ahead of God, do it our way, rely upon ourselves. Let's lift that up in the name of Jesus, trusting in his forgiveness.
Friends, know that Jesus loves you. And you, and you, and you. That Jesus forgives you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table everyone who seeks to be at peace with God and with one another. He makes no distinction except that you seek that peace which comes from divine love. And so, after our prayers this morning, you're invited to come forward to stand or kneel at the rail and to receive. If you need gluten-free, just ask for it. I'll serve it on this side. May the Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Oh, it is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, when our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you've given birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death, making with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you and he gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. And he gave it again to his friends saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, by your Spirit. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at that heavenly banquet. All this we lift up through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And the people said, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the body of Christ broken, that we might be the body of Christ in the world. Here, Joy, Joy, take one of those and one of those. Right there. All things are ready. Please come forward. Well, watch the chords, okay? Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, I would like, it's my great pleasure to present uh, Delise Kwanzan. Did I get that right? And Delise has been a local pastor in the Methodist Church in Ghana. And for the past year, she has been leading Methodists in uh, worship and Bible study and prayer and service in our community. And um, she has decided that she would like to think about dating us. <laughs> We are going to start next Sunday at noon holding a worship service that will be African in style. It's a Methodist worship service. So we're all welcome to attend that. And once a month, um, we will all come together. And over time, I would expect our coming together Sunday will start to look different, all right? And we will uh, share more in the rich tradition of African Methodism, as well as what we have had here. So, would you care to give us a final blessing? Please let us stand up. Eternal Father, we thank you. We adore and worship you. We praise you for such a wonderful service you have given to us, especially the word from our reverend. Oh Lord, let us be the doer and let us do the will of your world. Lord, as we are departing from this place, we are still yours. Continue to bless us. Continue to lead us throughout this week. Oh, by next week, we will be gathered in your name. I think you will be with us. You protect us. You guide us. You will be out everywhere, wherever you are going, you will be with us. So at the end, your children will say hallelujah and amen to your name. Lord, bless us. Feed us, guide us, protect us. Watch over us wherever we are going. This we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sir. 
consciousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. And we are your laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, ye.